So everybody, welcome to the show, Two Dudes Hanging Out. It's been a long, long time since I've made one of these videos, but it all had to do with my guest of today. He reached out to me to see if we could do a video. We also made one for his channel. Be sure to check it out. I'll link it in the description for you. So Dave, welcome to the show, man. Feel free to uh, introduce you to my audience, man. So hello, Rico. Thanks for having me here. Um, so I'm the Centralized Dave. Uh, I do a little bit of the YouTube. I have a documentaries background from uh, televisions and I am generally interested in crypto, obviously, right? Uh, and so I said myself one day that why not to do some kind of reviews? So I started doing reviews and um, I can see organic activity coming. So there is a sense in doing that and I will, I intend to keep doing that. And on top of that, of course, uh, every now and then, I, uh, I do podcasts like this. Awesome, man. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. So, like I said, it's a very relaxed uh, show as far as I'm concerned, but I do have yeah, some no. pointers that uh, I wanted to, to ask you. And one of them is uh, maybe it'll be fun for us to know how you started in crypto or with crypto. Yeah, I, re I remember that month. I remember that day. And that month was December 2017 when I heard about bitcoin as millions of people around the world have because i presumably that was the first time when there was a worldwide media coverage of crypto and bitcoin in particular so that's i felt the victim of that as well i've heard about this thing called bitcoin i read it in the local news i'm still figuring figuring it out but i didn't hear, hear about bitcoin before that i even was in london for years before i still didn't i don't know how is it possible that it all just dodged me but i was just unlucky yeah i heard about bitcoin december 2017 i looked at it and i said to myself immediately like uh maybe you will hate me for saying that but i said to myself this is a missed ship for me so but immediately after that still in december around the christmas time five years ago oh my god time flies i discovered that the bitcoin spawned the whole industry of thousands and thousands of other crypto projects and i looked at that and the moment i saw that i was like poof, like oh my gosh like this is something i'm gonna do like this is even there is a even future for like the whole society like somewhere this in this mess of thousands of projects are upcoming mass adopted projects and I'm going to find them. I'm going to be interested in them. And so that's how I started. Nice. Yeah. So basically first you thought you'd miss the ship, but then eventually you got in anyways. I still think I missed the ship with Bitcoin. I've never really been into Bitcoin ever since my first day. I've never been that. And yeah, Bitcoin, I, I admit, and I'm going to talk about it in this podcast uh, some more, but of course, I see the value in the most liquid project, right? And in the biggest brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see the value. But for me, Bitcoin is like a trade, trade in and trade out. Like uh, I don't intend, I never thought to, to hodl it. As for the hodling, and also that was in the past that I always uh, look for the other projects. Mm. So like some people, like me, for instance, I see Bitcoin as one of the more uh, stable things to get so kind of like mm -hmm. gold you know ethereum like silver but since you're handling it differently i'm very curious to know what your most favorite project in crypto is then and why right okay so the short answer is that it changes uh it changes in time like once upon a time in 2020 my most favorite project was cardano not ashamed of that <laughs> i still love I... cardano yeah yeah I, in 2021, for a number of reasons, I uh, exited and I don't think I will ever come back. So it changes uh, in time. Uh, at the moment, and since this year, I started doing the reviews and I do reviews about small approaches mostly and layer ones mostly. So layer ones, I'm sure the audience knows, but uh, just in case, it's like Ethereum layer one is the base layer projects that infrastructure platform for other projects to run on top of it and especially the next the upcoming generation of layer ones because we already talk about generations there is a public unilateral consensus that bitcoin is generation one that ethereum is generation two and that now the new project is generation three and in my opinion there is even generation four and five as well coming so back to your question it changes and at the moment it's most likely my most favorite projects 
I don't have just one, but it's like baskets. And yeah, yeah. It's it's generally layer ones of the uh, new generation. But wh- name a couple. Which ones are do you have right. interest right now? Yeah. So I am uh, keeping a close eye on Luxo, for instance. Again, from numbers of reasons. Have a, have a look at my review if if you want to find out. Also, I highly respect your reviews, by the way. I, that's also why I contacted you. I saw your cell frame review, and it's just it was wonderful. Great work, honest work. I also I have a board here, so you can't see that. I have some stuff written, yeah. like <laughs> physical board venue, you know, right with that. Yeah, yeah, awesome, man. Like a notebook, yeah. but then physical. Yeah, yeah, you know, the whole board for that. Yeah, for I got the, the same one in my track. office, yeah. <laughs> I got, I, I, the only difference is the things I wrote on them uh-huh. are like life goals. So oh, okay. at first it used to be like to do, it literally says to do. And then the first thing is, uh, it says uh, become a millionaire. And then, you know, I had a couple of more goals, but now that my life has changed and become a dad and stuff. So the first goal I have is to be the most awesome Whoa. dad I can be for my kids oh. and provide them uh, with the best, uh, with the best life possible. And then my second to do is actually becoming a millionaire. And then I've also um, written down some numbers that I can check off along the way, you know, so. Does it mean you are not yet? <laughs> I'm not yet a millionaire, no. Really? No, no. On the contrary, oh. on the contrary, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, so name a couple. So Laxo is one. Also, I'm going to keep uh, shortlisted uh, Radix. That's another layer one. It's very impressive. All of, even Laxo is impressive in its own ways as well. Chromia, it's uh, also when I started researching it and the, did the review, I realized things that I was like, my jaw dropped. So I'm not going to forget Chromia. What else? Just out of top of my head. Alliance blog is not layer one. It's layer two, but it's a finance system, which this is the most freaking compliant, regulation compliant uh, finance system I've ever seen. Alliance which, blog. Which one? Which one? It's Alliance blog, A-L-B-T. A L B T. Okay. Yes. A L B T. It's a sum up. They, they do lots of things. Uh, they have lots of utility already and they are the most compliant stuff I've ever seen. That's one of their top priorities when they develop stuff. This is to, like, it has to be compliant. Did, so, did you make a video about them or? Yeah. It's the most popular actually review of mine. Oh really? Wow. I should have yeah. a look, man. Awesome. You should have a look. Well, self frame is also layer one. I also, but the community is not just, it's not there. I don't think I should include self frame there, but okay. So I think these four examples would suffice for now. And did you make a video on all four of them or? On all four. Okay. I reviewed all four. Yeah. I'm going to have a look, man, to see uh, if it's something that I'm interested in as well. Thanks. Because I'm always on the lookout for, for new projects, uh, even though like the last time we discussed eh, I'm focusing more on the uh, more known projects because I got a high liquidity. Ri- yeah, because I got a different risk appetite. And for those mm-hmm. of you watching, if you want to know what my risk appetite is, be sure to check out Davis's video, obviously. So, but yeah, I'm still on the lookout because, you know, with every bag, in my opinion, it's always good to just invest like a small amount in newer projects because maybe they will take off and if you lose you won't lose as much but the chances are of of doing a couple of axes are obviously way higher than uh, let's say a bitcoin or i i will add or maybe uh, what i'm trying to do is that to to put it into small project by the basket of them yeah 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 exactly basket of them make different baskets yeah that makes sense that makes sense so you're way or you're much longer in crypto than me actually um oh my gosh really yeah because i only started like for real investing for Uh real i started in like i think january or february this month uh, this year i'm sorry oh really yeah i didn't do anything in crypto before that that's unexpected Uh, (laughs) yes it's true that i i bought my first uh pro- my first crypto in uh, 2018 but i was it was very sporadically and it was i was i didn't understand it and it was just the beginning but in 2020 i really started seriously and also seriously looking into it when the corona came i started researching it x eons times more so uh, what has been your your biggest success in crypto so far 
which project or yeah which it, can, it can be anything it can be something where you put in a thousand dollars and or euros okay. in your case and it became like ten thousand euros or it can be just a project okay. that really lifted off or whatever you want man so yeah obviously like the most of the people here perhaps uh the spring 2021 i then followed my my uh, my net worth but uh I, I uh, got the uh, I started playing le with leverage a little too much and I got literally almost like wiped out so wow it's uh, still in the same uh, in the same same time so yeah that was the biggest uh, success story anyway so you tenfolded your net worth or your portfolio worth my, my net worth more or less wow uh, so that's every your net worth is everything including your house and everything you own on the bank and you know just my portfolio. Oh, yeah. your portfolio. Because yeah. I, I, I wanted to know I if you tenfold about, your so. net worth, that's amazing, man. <laughs> that's amazing. And, and it, 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 it makes it extra bad if you lost it all in, 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 in let's say, uh, leverage trading. Because it, which platform did you use to leverage trade? Have a guess. Crypto.com, maybe? No. Guess again. You will guess it right. Kraken. Just what's what's the most talked about platform at the moment fdx <laughs> yes that's where I oh was. wow did you still have money there or no 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 i took all that was left i took out oh that's good man that's good to hear that's good to hear a lot still, of people got wrecked man wow still and i got wiped out because i used collateral yeah uh, uh my bitcoin cash and i was in bitcoin cash heavily and that was my biggest mistake that was my worst ever that's a unbelievable mistake and Ever since that time, I will be, for the rest of my life, I will be very careful with any kind of religious thinking in crypto. And that's also one of the primary reasons why I exited Cardano and why I'm not coming back. Because it has very similar religious thinking that Bitcoin Cash used to have. Used to have. And using it as a collateral was why I got wiped, because it dropped way more than... Like, I, I even swapped my Cardano for Bitcoin Cash and Cardano still was going up and bitcoin cash started dropping and so that was your and basically that was your worst move then selling your that cardano was my for, best move yeah uh, selling your cardano for bitcoin cash and then everything got wiped everything got wiped. that kind of sounds like me uh exchanging all my bnb including all the profits that i made to buy solana at 212. <laughs> that just really 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 screwed me over and i, I did I some yeah, I did some private sales as well. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know if you were ever entered private sales, but I've been working together with this um, uh, this uh, venture capital group, you know, this VC, uh, mm -hmm. and I did a couple of uh, private sales, but none of them took off just yet. There's there's one or two that I think might go off in a bull run, next bull run, uh, but most of them uh, tanked. Uh, one I put in five thousand, that's now worth like two hundred, maybe uh and i got wiped out during le while doing leverage trading as well i was i was using a bot so i bought service like a robo advisor and that mm -hmm. would enter or exit the uh, positions and then what happened was uh, i had to connect that one to my uh to my exchange account but mm -hmm. stupid little old me was using the same exchange account to leverage trade manually and that actually went pretty well. I made like a hundred dollars every day. You know, those are tiny, tiny, small amounts. But if you do it times thirty, it's three thousand dollars. You know, but then uh, I had a long, and then the bot went short. On on mm -hmm. you know, so I had a long on the bot, and then it opened a short position to close the long position. But because mm -hmm. I already closed it manually, it opened a short position on my account which wasn't what i wanted and then it it, it, it wiped me out five thousand euros in a week and i was like oh, i'm never going to do leverage trading again so now that we've talked about your best uh investment and your worst uh, investment one thing uh, i'm curious about because i still hold cardano and you said i'm never going back again so what's mm -hmm. the reason that you want to stay away from cardano the many reasons i even did i just to be sure i even did a review on it uh and the review is the longest i've ever made and i'm not gonna do 30 minutes review again the audience doesn't want it so you have to make it like 15 minutes and i've discovered that it's just too much like 
well, the number number one thing why it's because the whole community sounds like and seems to me very much like Bitcoin Cash in back 2020 or 2021. And all of this religious kind of thinking, all of this, like I can't imagine how many times I've heard before that this is the true Bitcoin and how, you know, people went for hours and hours and hours that, yes, this is the true Bitcoin and this BTC is just some kind of fork that is nothing. And this is the true one. And that's going to go for tens of thousands of dollars. And now it's 99% undervalued and stuff like that. And when I see forums, when I see people arguing, you can see all these Cardano people trying their best to convince others about yeah, their they're fanboys. grandiose. Yeah. And this is not really, and it's all about the Charles Hoskinson. Like also in my review, I've also reviewed Charles particularly. And I've discovered that this guy is just the best marketeer and the best storyteller in the world. But that's I and deal maker. But that's it. And it's not really what the Cardano people think about him. They think it's a some kind of a great, like even programmer maybe. Or but no, no, no. He's just marketeer and all this philosophy that this is all peer reviewed. And that's why we are superior. No, no, I don't think. I'm not even sure that all of that by using Cardano is peer reviewed anymore. I even would question even that. I also had a look at the white paper, the Ouroboros. It was, of course, too complicated, too math heavy for uh, average like guy. And that's also a problem. Like I think that the white papers should be written in a way friendly way and uh, simplified. There are many reasons. Uh, why exited Cardano, but the religious aspect is the biggest. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that's one thing I don't like about Cardano either. Like you said, they try to convince everybody, and it sounds mm -hmm. like well, especially during the bull run. Right now, it's it's a little bit quiet. Even though I have to admit oh that now that we're in the bear market, I'm not as active on everything as I used to be. Uh, but they sound like a cult, you know, like 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 exactly. Charles is the guru, and everybody's following. Yeah, him and... that's my point. Yeah. Yeah, I understand, man. And okay. I got burned. This kind of thinking burned me with Bitcoin Cash, and I will never touch. I'm careful, very sensitive about that since then. Yeah, you learned your lesson, yeah. Hey, and um, let's say looking at the future, and you know, what uh, what will uh -huh. be your your what is your strategy in general? Well, uh, I have learned the hard way about the risk management. And I think that the chances for uh, big gains, like 100x, will be e extremely harder and are extremely hard, will be extremely hard. At the moment, there are none, uh, but when this changes, when the tide changes, when the trend changes, it's going to be very much harder to get 100x opportunities. And there might be some of the last. And of course, I'm doing my best to find them, uh, those, those last surviving you know uh chances um so uh my strategy in general is to be well less greedy and also have a look at the, what the big youtubers say and then be even less greedy than that and but not be they are bearish if the big youtubers i i like to be very contrarian i've learned all of this because at the end of the day all of the prices are speculational yeah and when the speculate when when it comes to speculation it's not logical really it's the speculation world is the world where the majority sadly is going to have to lose i think so and also when you say what the big youtubers have been saying they've all been bullish in november yeah they've all been bullish in january they've all been bullish like hell in in march they've all been bearish in june they've all been bullish again in november at the beginning so yeah, I like to be contrarian, so maybe that would be the answer. Uh, contrarian. So, so who's your favorite YouTuber to follow when it comes to crypto news and crypto tips in general? Uh, I, I could tell you a few if you told me that which I like to contrarian the most, that uh, which I listen to just to do the opposite. But also it wouldn't be polite to mention them this way, so maybe <laughs> let's, let's not talk about it. But which one I like... Exceptionally, I found one channel that I think these guys are pretty much on point. 
Macro compass, right? Is it macro compass? They are big ones, but it's it's an exception. It's the only big ones that I actually have macro a look at. compass. Yeah, yeah. There is there are like guys who have like who, who led the hedge funds and like these guys are like real deal. Like uh, is that like Blockworks macro or? Yeah, Blockworks macro. That's them. Okay, so you like to follow them for the news and stuff. I like to learn from them. They are uh, guys from you know tens of years of experience, mm. and they provide really kind of a advanced uh, educational inf information. So they are of a great value to me. And uh, from the small ones, I can tell you the blockchain guy, for instance, it's a young man in twenties, and this guy I really like the blockchain guy. He's still small. I, I saw him first when he had like a couple of hundreds of subscribers and he was talking about UST and I was like, well, this guy is on point. Like, because he was talking about the risks and that was the beginning of the year, UST. That was the time when I could tell you other YouTubers, the big ones that were all about Terra Luna and UST and telling about how great of a thing it is. And I didn't like that at all. And I like this the blockchain guy because he was making, he made a video about USD leveraging against itself. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, Abracadabra, I think it was called the process. And I was like, and he was mentioning many points and he was saying that this thing is 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 not safe at all. And that was in beginning of the year. So I also like him. Mm. I'm gonna pull him up on the screen uh, in the edit room. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, good, yeah. He like... deserves it, he deserves it. He does a honest work just like you, for instance. Mm. Oh, that's good to hear, man. I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll check them out. So, since you've been following them, like through the the, the last year, the past years, uh, we still have to look at at twenty twenty three. Obviously, since the past is the past, and we can't change it, we can only learn from it. So, what's what's your take on the 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 future for crypto in let's say twenty twenty three? I think twenty twenty three is going to yield a bottom. The cryptocurrencies, uh, maybe not all. But many, at least, or most, will bottom for a few years uh, forward. So I think, I believe, this, none of this is financial advice, I said. I believe that 2023 is going to bring excellent buys for the people that are patient enough and that have a stamina to do so. And some of the smaller projects... I can say that I only think only the smaller projects now bring 100x opportunities. Some of them will bottom as well. So some of the buys that we can make in 2023 can actually really yield the last maybe 100x yields in the two or three years time or, or something like that. I suppose it's only lucky few will uh, hit those projects. Yeah, I think that the, the being less greedy is going to pay off. Yeah, so basically you think it'll be a buyer's market next year with prices bottoming out of most of the crypto projects? I think so. And giving you I, I some nice that. opportunities to uh, to get in. I think that. Without it being financial but advice, obviously, like you said. Yeah. That's great, man. Um, so that concludes the uh, uh, the questions I had prepared for you or the, the, the stuff I wanted to talk about. Is there something uh, you want to uh, tell my audience or ask them to do or? Try to expect something that never happened before. <laughs> if you want to be, if you want to, depends. Like I suppose most of your audience is here for the speculation part. And if that's you who are watching, try to expect something that never happened before. And it's not going to be for the big YouTubers that are going to tell you that can happen or will happen. They will, they will space it out. You will not hear it anywhere there. You might hear it in some small really places, some people that nobody listens to. So try to expect. So if you see all of these charts and BRV and stuff like that that worked in the past, be very, be very skeptical. If you want to really win, try to find something that uh, never happened before. <laughs> And do you think do you think Twitter is a good medium for that? Or uh, I only yeah the only social uh, the only social network where I am as a decentralized dev is Twitter. I, I'm not social networks are not my forte, <laughs> obviously. And I chose Twitter because I like the finality part that you make a, a tweet and it's final. You can't edit it. Yeah, most important thing for me. 
but also I like it that there seems to be the most opinions from both sides. Mm. And that's also towards the most controversial topics or most dangerous topics today, which presumably are the Corona stuff and everything associated with it, a vaccination. There you see, there I see the most pro and against. The same with the uh, with the war in the East, pro yeah. and against. Yeah. The the other social networks seem to be more uh, um, uh, more uh, censored. Censored. Yeah. yeah. Censor, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, man. That makes sense. I think uh, that was a good uh, final thought for my audience. Uh, I want to thank you for being here in my show. I really enjoyed you having as a guest. Uh, unfortunately, my time is up as well, so I got to go. Um, thanks again, man. I hope to talk to you uh, uh, again in the, in the future.